you know, we could have a total polar shift, yet science doesn't even talk to us about this. And it's a very real possibility. Of course it is. Uh, we have uh, uh, taken geological samples up uh, near the Arctic Circle that show a very broad range of alignments of the poles of the Earth. Now, these alignments occur when uh, lava comes up through the, the crust and then it freezes. It assumes the magnetic alignment of the Earth at that time. Well, when we go up near the Arctic Circle, we see these tectonic spectrums of north and south pole alignments in mountains and in, in rock that hasn't moved for hundreds of thousands of years. And guess what? Sometimes it shows the north as south and the south as north. And this is, uh, you know, according to the Coriolis effect, something that could occur rather quickly, like in a matter of days, the north and south poles could switch. And we could talk a little bit about what the f effects would be on the surface of the planet oh, if that sure. could happen. Yeah, I, I'd love to know because there's some people, I've, and I've asked this question, Brooks, many times, some people believe that we could go instantly other people think it's gradually, and some people think nothing will happen at all, which I don't believe. I think it'll be uh, pretty drastic. There's too much evidence that the poles do shift, north and south poles do shift. And if the core is detached from the crust, as we believe, and the core is thus counter-rotating against the crust, creating our powerful magnetic field, which we call a magnetosphere, if all those things are, are true and line up, then we are setting ourselves up, or the planet is set up, to do a Coriolis flip, that the north and south poles could flip. And I mean in somewhere between 72 hours and five days, this flip could be complete. Now, it doesn't take an atmospheric physicist to understand what's going to happen, but I'll explain it briefly. The north hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have different weather patterns. For instance, uh, if you drain water down the tub in Australia, it goes clockwise right. instead of counterclockwise exactly. and opposite up here. Well, the jet stream does exactly the same thing. Clouds move counterclockwise and clockwise in different areas, and so do the, the oceanic currents. If all of those things move and move suddenly, you're going to have conditions set up for what's called a global superstorm. Now, these are these are snowstorms, but they're not ordinary snowstorms. They are super cold, and they cover large geographic areas. And in terms of the intensity, how intense is it? Well, according to what we've uncovered in the book, and, and this goes back uh, 26,000 years as far as we can gather data, we could be facing winds of 300 miles an hour, and those winds could last for a month or more. That would knock down practically everything. Once you got sand and glass and, and rocks moving at that speed, it would literally sandblast areas everything. of the planet. And we are talking planetary-wide, right? Yes. Well, there will be, there'll be corridors where the winds are going that high. In the northernmost uh, and southernmost areas, the winds won't be that high. But... I would say from about 35 degrees north and 35 degrees south, the winds will be the highest. Will we see this coming, Brooks? Well, we're already seeing it coming. Uh, the hurricanes are getting much, much more intense. Straight-line winds, what are called errant tidal waves, these are huge waves, 100-foot-high waves that race around the planet at four to 500 miles an hour. Now, fortunately, the ocean's deep, so they don't, you know, crest and crash, but there are, are uh, ocean liners that are reporting these errant tidal waves that go racing around the planet, and now the frequency is up to more than one a month. One a month? That yes, more than one a month, and this is reported by uh, ocean liners that are out at sea. I know two people that have been on two separate cruises where 900-foot-long ships have almost been turned on their sides at sea. And your projection of wind speed, for example, 300 miles an hour, that could be a low projection. It could be, yes. Uh, of course, wind is asymptotic in the sense that it can only go so fast, and it, then it starts uh, crunching up against the sound barrier. But uh, three or four hundred mile an hour winds, which is roughly double what you see in a in a tornado, 
And, uh, you know, look at the tornadoes just in the last eight weeks in the U.S. They've been devastating. Iowa has been flooded. Uh, St. Louis area has been flooded. St. Louis area, correct. Just And also up in Maine, they've had uh, bitter cold temperatures. It's uh, In fact, here in Washington State, they had the coldest, longest winter they've ever seen. More snow than ever. Could this trigger an ice age? It could, and, and it's funny because ice ages, it's believed in, in the past, sort of creep up on you. Uh, that's not the way they occur at all. Ice ages occur suddenly. They drop 8 to 10 feet of snow. It doesn't melt off during the summer. It reflects a lot of energy back out into space, which is called the albedo effect. Uh, right now, Earth is, is warming uh, because it's absorbing energy and from the sun and from other sources. But when it reflects that energy out into space, it cools. Now, that occurs two ways. One is if we get very high cloud cover. That is usually accompanied by cosmic radiation during high solar flare activity. Right now, we have no solar flare activity. There's been no sunspots appreciable for months. Science, scientists are getting concerned about that. Yes, and we thought that Solar Cycle 24 had started. We saw a high-latitude reverse polarity sunspot uh, three months ago, but we really haven't seen any follow-ups. And now we've seen sunspot 1,000 from Solar Cycle 23, and they're rather benign and they're small and they don't even last uh, during one revolution of the sun. So, and we're seeing very low solar winds, three or four hundred kilometers a second, and very low proton counts, which which means we're really not receiving that much cosmic radiation from the sun, at least in the wavelength that would cause high-altitude clouds, which would call, cause the Earth to cool. However, we are beginning to start Solar Cycle 24, and if it starts in earnest and does what solar scientists think it's going to do, along around 2012, it is going to be intense. And we're talking X-class flares above 7, maybe as high as 9 on a regular basis, this could cause high-altitude cloud cover and really rapid cooling of the Earth. Edgar Cayce predicted Earth changes on this planet, specifically at a map of North America. It looks like half of the United States is underwater. You think this is very possible? It is possible, uh, and it has happened before. If you look at the topsoil distributions of the United States, much of the United States has been underwater before. Uh, the mineral deposits that are laying right now uh, in farmland across our continent indicate that much of the United States was underwater or under ice at one time. Uh, that could happen again. And it doesn't necessarily happen from melting ice caps because obviously ice floating in water when it melts does not raise the water level just like ice cubes in a glass melt. Actually, the water level goes down in the glass instead of comes up because ice takes up more space in the glass. But uh, interestingly enough, it does add a lot of fresh water to the ocean, and that changes the salinity, which changes the amount of solar radiation it absorbs. When it does that, the Gulf Stream begins to move, and when it moves, it begins to come inland, and that's why this planet, or this continent anyway, up around the Mason-Dixon line, should be largely underwater, except for the mountain ranges. So Casey might be right. He very well could be right. And we're beginning to see a lot of, the, with the catastrophes, how we cannot handle even some flooding cases in various parts of this country. We can't handle it. No. Not enough sandbags to hold back. And we're just yeah. talking about holding back rivers. Try to hold back the Gulf of Mexico when it comes up the Mississippi River. You can't do it. You can't do it at all.